at Rincon de Luna in the southwest corner of Cordoba province in Argentina, and we're hunting giant red stags. The red stags here at Rincon de Luna are truly magnificent. And they got that way because they don't make it easy to hunt. They're in the most challenging environment, deep in the mountains, using rocky crevasses and ravines to shield themselves from the potential threat of a hunter. They know these mountains intimately, and as soon as there's any sign of danger, they disappear into a crack, a crevice, a ravine, and you'll never see them again. The morning started, as they usually do here at Rincon de Luna, very early. The plan was to head out on horseback, do the hard miles right up into the mountains, gain some elevation, and then use our position to scan all of the hillsides around us and find our stag. So it's a little after 10 a.m. and we've managed to make it up to pretty much the highest point in the hunting area. Although there's no wind, uh, which is a bonus. Now, there's a few good vantage points up here that we're gonna sit and spot for. And as you can see behind me, there's an awful lot of ground for us to cover. Whether or not there's enough cover to get in close well, remains to be seen. It'd be nice if they could be on one of these hillsides because all of these rocks and these ridges give you a really good opportunity to approach, get into position and take a shot. But unfortunately, Mother Nature doesn't always play the game. So all we need to do now is go and find the herd. Come on, fella. It's great for me as a rider, knowing that my horses, they're very adept at traversing this rocky terrain. They look after you as well as themselves. You've got to be a little bit patient with them from time to time, because they know when it's dangerous, and making them go that little bit too fast could be a disaster. Trekking into the mountains is hard enough, but when Mother Nature is throwing all of her arsenal against you, it really does sap your strength. You've got to dig down deep and persevere and commit yourself to the hunt. It was a tough, tough day. We put a lot of time, effort and energy into the mountain and we scanned lots of ridges, lots of valleys and lots of slopes, but we just didn't find the stag we were looking for. We're looking for a particular type of stag, one that's past breeding age or at the very end of his tenure, something that is perfect to take out to let the younger generation of stags come through and repopulate the gene pool. But after all those hours in the mountains, the sun started to fall in the sky and it was time to start making our way back. From the furthest expanse of the estate, it can take four or five hours sometimes to return on horseback. And here is not a place that you want to get caught out after dark. Day two was once again very, very cold. Another early start, but this time we're going to look at a different part of the estate. The weather was so cold that it was likely that most of the deer would have just hunkered down for the evening and wouldn't have moved too much. That means that looking over the land that we covered the previous day wasn't really a good option. We needed to go to fresh ground. The area we decided to check was more of a grassy, meadowy type area. It was sheltered from the wind and had high rocky outcroppings all the way around it. If I was a deer, that's where I would have hidden. And as usual, Santiago was absolutely right. He just knew, with the conditions, where the deer would be. As we came over the ridge, the place was teeming with red hinds. But not just red hinds, there were eight or nine decent-sized red stags in there as well. We had to be very careful about how we made our approach. That's a lot of eyes and ears to pick up sight and sound. Luckily for us, there were remnants of dry stone walling which were previously used to contain the cattle here. So although from above the meadow looked flat, fortunately for us, it was pretty rolling. Three or four tall ridges gave us the opportunity of traversing, glassing, and then going into the valley, coming back up the other side, and then just seeing what we could spot. The grass was pretty tall in this area, which also gave us a little bit extra cover.
As usual, the Red Hinds just seemed to know that there was danger and started moving away. You could see them becoming more uncomfortable. We got to the final ridge before the valley below us turned into a flat and we saw lots and lots of red stags, all different ages, two, three, four years old, right up to some very old, magnificent 12, 13 year old animals. They were the ones we were looking for. But unfortunately, with all those eyes and ears, we had to be very careful about how we got into position. My heart sank as the beast kind of rippled and then disappeared out of view. Had I made the good shot, had it been where it needed to be, doubt immediately started clouding my mind and I thought, this could be a tough day. But as it happens, the shot had connected perfectly. It was just a huge bodied animal. Just a few seconds, but enough to get my heart racing. <sighs> what an incredible animal, Santiago. Gracias, amigo. Oh, my Lord, this is a stag of a lifetime. The mass, the cups, the points, breathtaking, breathtaking. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. <laughs> That's incredible. You know, when I first came to Argentina and I was told about the breathtakingly magnificent red stags. I had no idea that I would be given the opportunity uh, to hunt one and certainly not be the successful. This is the animal of a lifetime, the mass, the age. Look at the size of its body. This animal is immense. And this has been the culmination of probably one of the most epic hunting adventures I've ever experienced. Wow.